Grace, mercy, and peace be to you from God our Father and from our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. As always, it's a joy to be able to bring the good news of Jesus to you. The text that we're going to consider this morning, this second Sunday after the Epiphany, is the psalm appointed for this Sunday. It's Psalm 139. I'm going to read the first ten verses and then skip to the last two verses. O Lord, you have searched me and known me. You know when I sit down and when I rise up. You discern my thoughts from afar. You search out my path and my lying down and are acquainted with all my ways. Even before a word is on my tongue, behold, O Lord, you know it altogether. You hem me in behind and before and lay your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It is high. I cannot attain it. Where shall I go from your spirit? Or where shall I flee from your presence? If I ascend to heaven, you are there. If I make my bed in Sheol, you are there. If I take the wings of the morning and dwell in the uttermost parts of the sea, even there your hand shall lead me and your right hand shall hold me. Search me, O God, and know my heart. Try me and know my thoughts. And see if there be any grievous way in me, and lead me in the way everlasting. Now most of you are probably familiar with the phrase, to know me is to love me. I looked that phrase up to see if I could find out where it came from, or who maybe coined it, but I wasn't able to find much on it. I do recall a song that includes the phrase in it. It's from Mac Davis, and you probably heard it. It's a song, O oh Lord, It's Hard to Be Humble. And it goes like this, at least the first verse. O oh Lord, it's hard to be humble when you're perfect in every way. I can't wait to look in the mirror because I get better looking each day. To know me is to love me. I must be one heck of a man. O oh Lord, it's hard to be humble, but I'm doing the best that I can. Now, uh, that phrase, to know me is to love me, is just foreign to me. Because it's, it's not the way I think, and it's probably not the way you think either. But it is the way David thought, interestingly enough. He knew that as God continued to search him out, he was just going to continue to love him. But that's not how we think. We think like this, if you really got to know me, you wouldn't love me. Because you're going to find darkness in me. Darkness that's going to repel you. We keep people at hand's distance, at arm's distance all the time. We don't want them knowing us because we know what we're like. With God, it's completely different. God wants to know you intimately. He wants to know everything about you. He loves you first, even before he starts to search. And he loves you unconditionally. That's why he can search, and it doesn't matter to him what he finds. He wants to love you through it. All of us are absolutely covered in sin. We have all done things, thought things, are things that would repel others. But not God. God loves us. He wants to love us with a, with a love that cleanses us and purifies us and leads us in his ways. God changes us as we allow him to love us. The love comes first with God. The knowing comes later as we allow him to know us. You know, Jesus 
in chapter 7 of Matthew tells us that some will not enter into the kingdom of heaven, even though they come to him and say, Lord, Lord, look at what I've done for you. He says, depart from me, for I never knew you. We can't keep God at arm's distance. He is constantly offering his love for us. His love shown us in the cross of Jesus Christ. That even while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. God has shown us all how much he loves us by sending his son to die for us despite our sinfulness. It's only then when we realize how much he loves us that we are able to be like David and to say, God, search me, know me, because I know that you love me. You gave your son for me despite all of my sin and all of my failure. You have shown me your love. I want you to know me. Come into me and, and make me pure. Lead me. You see, all of those things follow God's love. They follow God's love. They don't precede it. God doesn't love me because I've got my life right. My life begins to be right after I've received God's love for me. His love comes first. We think, I have to repent and turn, and then God will love me. No, it is God's kindness, it is God's love that brings me to repentance. I want God to search me. I want him to know me and to cleanse me of my sin and all of my failures and all of my wrongs because I know how much he loves me. And it's okay to dig in, to find what's wrong. Know me, God. Search me. Because I know you're not going to depart from me when you find the ugliness. People, this is what I want for all of you, to know God's great love for you. So that you can open yourself to him and say, God, search me. Know me. We cannot keep people at arm's length that, that love us. And we cannot keep God at arm's length. For it's in the knowing of us that he invites us into his kingdom. I'll say it again. Depart from me, he says, for I never knew you. It's in knowing us that we come into his kingdom and are a part of everlasting life, being known by God. But the love comes first. He assures us that whatever he finds is not going to repel him. He's going to love us through it. And people, we're called to do the same for others. We are not called to love them as we get to know them. We're called to love them and get to know them as they allow us and continue to love them even when we see darkness in them because it's the love that draws us into repentance. It's the love that begins to change us. This is the gospel. The God so loved the world that he gave his only son. And it's when we believe in his love for us that we receive him and welcome him in to to begin to know us and to, and to change us, to 
fill us with who he is and empower us to do his will. I have to tell you that if I was going to coin a phrase, it wouldn't be to know me is to love me. It would be to love me is to know me. You show me your love as you know me and continue to love me. And that's what God does for us all because none of us deserve his love. We deserve his rejection, but he does not reject us. Instead, he loves us, forgives us, renews us, and empowers us to be the people that he wants us to be. Amen.